Good day and God bless you and welcome to the Bible reading in chronological order. I just want to thank you once again for joining us and for participating in this venture with us and I pray that the Lord would be with you as we learn and grow together in the word of the Lord. We're still busy in the book of Exodus and today we're going to be dealing with Exodus chapters 33, 34 and 35. So let's get straight into it. Chapter 33, we see here that the Lord tells Moses that he is going to send an angel to lead the people into the promised land, but he himself will not go with them. Now, Moses then takes a tabernacle. This is a tent of meeting. It's not the, uh, it's not the tabernacle that he was given the instructions to build, but he takes that outside of the camp and there he, anyone that wanted to communicate with the Lord would go into that tabernacle there. Yeah, and that was, that was Moses in general, basically. And then Moses meets with God there and pleads with God that the presence of God would go with them and lead them into the promised land. And when Moses pleads with God here, the Lord actually uh, consents to Moses' request and actually uh, tells Moses that he will answer that that plea. But then Moses, I think he, he looks to push his luck a little bit here, and then he requests to see the glory of the Lord. But the Lord says, if you see my glory, you're going to die. But the Lord makes a way for Moses to see some of the presence of the Lord. Now, we often forget the presence of the Lord and how amazing it is and how awesome it is and when we look at it and we've spoken about this thus far the ones that have seen the Lord's presence truly that they fell at his feet as dead they fell in his presence as dead so Moses wanting to see the glory of God the Lord puts him in a cleft and then blocks his face and then as the presence goes by Moses sees the back of the Lord here in this in this instance but he does not see the glory of God, uh, the face of God in that way, lest he die. It's actually just beautiful to see how much the Lord uh, loved Moses and, and wanted to, uh, you know, just, just heed the plea of Moses here, uh, even in this thing. Then we get to chapter 34. And in chapter 34, we see that Moses is instructor of the Lord to hew out two tables of stone exactly like the ones that the Lord had given Moses initially. And so Moses goes up in the Mount Sinai according to God's instruction. And God meets with Moses there and tells him that the pe people of Israel are not allowed to make any covenants with the inhabitants of the lands where the Lord is leading them through. Now in the mountain, the Lord instructs Moses to keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread, to keep the law of the redemption of the firstborn, to keep the Sabbath law, to keep the feast of weeks, to keep the first fruits. Now these will be discussed in a little more detail in the book of Leviticus and the book of Deuteronomy. But it is important to know that the Lord has instructed Moses that the children of Israel need to keep these even through their journey in the wilderness. Now while Moses was on the mount with the Lord, he was with him there for 40 days and 40 nights, eating and drinking nothing. Now, this is really important, and we'll see that in the, in the New Testament, when the Lord goes into the wilderness and he is tempted of the devil there, he goes without food and water for 40 days and 40 nights. But we'll get to that when we get there. So now Moses was on the mount with the Lord, and Moses comes down from the mount, and his face shone, with the glory of the Lord and with the presence of the Lord and the people were so afraid that Moses had to cover his face with a veil. And the only time that Moses removed the veil from his face was when he went to speak with the Lord again. Just note that in Michelangelo's statue of Moses that he makes, you'd see that Moses has two horns. Now those two horns actually are not horns as such, but they are actually the, the shining, the glory of the Lord that was shining forth from the face of Moses. And it was just a little mistranslation that made it, uh, made it sound like horns. And that's why he's got it in there as horns on Moses' head. 
which is kind of interesting and I just threw it in there just so you could uh, you could ponder on that as well then we get to chapter 35 and in chapter 35 we see that Moses gives the instructions of the Lord to the people the keeping of the Sabbath rest is commanded the instructions on the building of the tabernacle is given to the people and then we see that the offerings of the materials that were needed are to come from the people who have a willing heart to offer it to the Lord and we see that the people do bring the offerings and they bring all of these things the word and the, and, and, and the gold all, all that they could bring to the Lord they bring with a willing heart for the building of this tabernacle then we see that the wise woman did spin the linen uh, with their hands and some spun goat's hair and all of these things. Then we see that Bezalel of the tribe of Judah and Aholiab uh, of the tribe of Dan were two of the main craftsmen and they were overseers of the work that was taking place. And that's basically chapter 35 in a nutshell. So I pray that the reading today would be a blessing to you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he give you peace. God bless you. Chapter 33. And the Lord said unto Moses, Depart and go up hence, thou and the people which thou hast brought out of the land of Egypt, unto the land which I swear unto Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, Unto thy seed will I give it. And I will send an angel before thee, and I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. For I will not go up in the midst of thee. Thou art a stiff necked people, lest I consume thee in the way. And when the people heard these evil tidings, they mourned, and no man did put on him his ornaments. For the Lord had said unto Moses, Say unto the children of Israel, Ye are a stiff necked people. I will come up into the midst of thee in a moment and consume thee. Therefore now put off thy ornaments from thee, that I may know what to do unto thee. And the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments by the Mount Horeb. And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp afar off from the camp and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that every one which sought the Lord went out unto the tabernacle of the congregation which was without the camp. And it came to pass when Moses went out unto the tabernacle that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door and looked after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass as Moses entered into the tabernacle the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door, and all the people rose up and worshipped, every man in his tent door. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle, and Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon the rock. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back part, but my face shall not be seen. 
chapter 34. And the Lord said unto Moses, Hew me two tables of stone like unto the first, and I will write upon these tables the words that were in the first tables which thou breakest. And be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai, and present thyself there to me, in the top of the mount. And no man shall come up with thee, neither let any man be seen throughout all the mount, neither let the flocks nor herds feed before that mount. And he hewed two tables of stone like unto the first. And Moses rose up early in the morning, and went up unto Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him, and took in his hand the two tables of stone. And the Lord descended in the cloud, and stood with him there, and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him, and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that were by no means clear and guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. And he said, If now I have found grace in thy sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray thee, go among us. For it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for thine inheritance. And he said, Behold, I make a covenant. Before all thy people I will do marvels such as have not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation. And all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord. For it is a terrible thing that I will do with thee. Observe thou that which I command thee this day. Behold, I drive out before thee the Amorite and the Canaanite and the Hittite and the Perizzite and the Hivite and the Jebusite. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. But ye shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. For thou shalt worship no other god, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous god. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a-whoring after their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods, and one call thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice. And thou take of their daughters unto thy sons, and their daughters go a-whoring after their gods, and make thy sons go a-whoring after their gods. Thou shalt make thee no molten gods. The feast of unleavened bread shalt thou keep. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, as I commanded thee, in the time of the month Abib, for in the month Abib thou camest out from Egypt. All that openeth the matrix is mine, and every firstling among thy cattle, whether ox or sheep, that is male. But the firstling of ass thou shalt redeem with a lamb, and if thou redeem him not, then shalt thou break his neck. All the firstborn of thy sons thou shalt redeem, and none shall appear before me empty. Six days thou shalt work, but on the seventh day thou shalt rest. In hearing time and in harvest thou shalt rest. And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks, the first fruits of wheat harvest, and the feast of in gathering at the year's end. Thrice in the year shall all your men children appear before the Lord God, the God of Israel. For I will cast out the nations before thee and enlarge thy borders. Neither shall any man desire thy land when thou shalt go up to appear before the Lord thy God thrice in the year. Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leaven. Neither shall the sacrifice of the feast of the Passover be left unto the morning. The first of the first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring unto the house of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not see the kid in his mother's milk. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write thou these words, for after the tenor of these words I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And it came to pass, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mount, that Moses wist not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh him. And Moses called unto them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him, and Moses talked with them. And afterward, all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. And till Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face.
and the jumped in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. And he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses that the skin of Moses' face shone. And Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him. Chapter 35 And Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together and said unto them, These are the words which the Lord hath commanded that ye should do them. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be to you an holy day, a Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. And Moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord. Whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it, an offering of the Lord, gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skins dyed red and badger's skins and shittim wood and oil for the light and spices for anointing oil and for the sweet incense and onyx stones, and stones to be set for the ephod, and for the breastplate. And every wise-hearted among you shall come, and make all that the Lord hath commanded, the tabernacle, his tent, and his covering, his tashes, and his boards, his bars, his pillars, and his sockets, the ark, and the staves thereof, with the mercy seat, and the veil of the covering, the table, and his staves, and all his vessels, and the showbread, the candlestick also for the light, and his furniture, and his lamps with the oil for the light, and the incense altar, and his staves, and the anointing oil, and the sweet incense, and the hanging for the door at the entering in of the tabernacle, the altar of burnt offering with his brazen grate, his staves and all his vessels, the laver and his foot, the hangings of the court, his pillars and their sockets, and the hanging for the door of the court, the pins of the tabernacle and the pins of the court and their cords the cloths of service, to do service in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron, the priest, and the garments of his sons, to minister in the priest's office. And all the congregation of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses. And they came, every one whose heart stirred him up, and every one whom his spirit made willing. And they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation, and for all his service, and for the holy garments. And they came, both men and women, as many as were willing-hearted, and brought bracelets and earrings and rings and tablets, all jewels of gold. And every man that offered, offered an offering of gold unto the Lord. And every man with whom was found blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and red skins of rams and badger's skins brought them. Every one that did offer an offering of silver and brass brought the Lord's offering. And every man with whom was found shittim wood for any work of the service brought it. And all the women that were wise-hearted did spin with their hands and brought that which they had spun, both of blue and of purple and of scarlet and of fine linen. And all the women whose hearts stirred them up in wisdom spun goat's hair. And the rulers brought onyx stones and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate and spice and oil for the light and for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense. The children of Israel brought a willing offering unto the Lord, every man and woman whose heart made them willing to bring for all manner of work which the Lord had commanded to be made by the hand of Moses. And Moses said unto the children of Israel, See, the Lord hath called by name Bezaleel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And he hath filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship and to devise curious works, to work in gold and in silver and in brass, and in the cutting of stones to set them, and in carving of wood to make any manner of cunning work. And he hath put in his heart that he may teach both he and Aholiab, the son of Ahishamach of the tribe of Dan. Them hath he filled with wisdom of heart to work all manner of work of the engraver and of the cunning workman, and of the embroiderer in blue and in purple, in scarlet and in fine linen, and of the weaver, even of them that do any work, and of those that devise cunning work.